G'day everyone, uh, this is TechEd Online. Uh, I've got Lilia Goodnick here, we're going to be, and I'm Alan Birchall, and we're going to be talking about lots of stuff. Group policies, a few other things. Power. Power, power, the power of group policy, yes. <laughs> yes. And power schemes and power options. Yeah, yeah. And so you're from Redmond? Yes, well, from Redmond, I currently live in the Seattle area. So yeah. you've, you've come over from Australia, uh, from, sorry, you've come to Australia from Redmond for, yes. for Tech Ed 09 here on the Gold Coast? Something or? like a million miles away. Yeah. Two yeah, million miles. Yeah. Felt like a really long time. But I'm really glad I'm here now. I'm yeah. really glad I'm so here, you, yeah. you liking Australia? I am, actually. Uh, I did a talk at the Brisbane Interfa uh, Infrastructure User Group on Monday night, and I had just flown in, super jet-lagged. I arrived at something like 6 a.m., that morning in whatever crazy time difference it, went, it meant for me. And then I, I did a talk later that evening, and the people there re-energized me to be able to, you know, adjust to the time difference and, and, really get, and really get passionate because they were so passionate. They were asking really good questions, asking things, you know, they were really interested in group policy and were super excited about group policy preferences, which is something that you're really passionate about also. So... You know, I'm only looking forward to being able to talk more and more about that throughout the rest of the conference because I think the more people learn about preferences, the more excited they're going to be, and then That's we'll right. all just be having a, a policy party all That's day right. long. Policy party. <laughs> yeah, well, group policy preferences. Um, there's just so many things you can do with them. I think that people just don't realize what they can do. And, and for a lot of people, they can already... Have the inf they already have the infrastructure in place to use them. That's true. And with these netbooks with Win7 on them, you can already start playing with it if you get Remote Server Administration Toolkit and make sure that you get the GPMC, Group Policy Management Console, on there. Then you'll be able to see everything without even having you know, to commit to anything in your environment, um, which I think is really awesome. The bit about preferences, there is so much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you know, when they're first starting to experiment, first starting to convert it into their uh, environment, start with things like map drives, um, you know, local groups, things, really cool things, really powerful, something that a lot of people already have in log on scripts. Um, but they're missing so much more of what preferences has. You know, one of the things that you were talking to me about um, in your presentation coming up, you're going to be doing stuff with power. That's right. I think that's huge. So yeah. why, why do you think that power is something that people should use so much with preferences? Well, businesses nowadays, they're mm -hmm. all on the, the green band, bandwagon, mm -hmm. rightfully so. They want to save electricity. They want to be able to, to reduce their uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And, and one of the challenges is, even with, uh, with Windows XP, was it was really difficult to force policies mm -hmm. so that they could do simple things, just like turning off the monitor when it's not in use, mm -hmm. or maybe shutting the machine down. And with group policy preferences, you can now do that with Windows XP. And with, of course, with Windows Vista and now with Windows 7 being released, you have far more options to use it with. That's a good point. In fact, all of that stuff that was available in preferences regarding power was available in the first iteration of preferences in Server 2008, which means that you can also use it if you had a Vista, you know, a Vista SP1 box. Um, and so in Win7, it just steps it up a notch, right? And now it's adding the Vista power scheme, Win7 power scheme, so you can configure and target all the different clients in your environment. I think that probably a lot more people will be migrating some of their clients to hopefully the Win7 client yeah. and then be able to target for that kind of power saving. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's, that that's like a really compelling business reason to start looking into preferences, That's you know, right. even more than saving time on logon scripts, you're saving money, you're saving energy. That's right. So I think that, that that's something that not a lot of people have started to use yet, but I think they really should. Yeah, and I think that's another reason why people should start looking at using Windows 7, because mm -hmm. it already has the client-side extensions out of the box. That's a really good point. That's true. Uh, one of the things that held people back before was that in order to not only manage preferences but then actually get them to the appropriate clients is that those clients had to have the appropriate client side extensions. Well, those available through download, through WSUS, through WooMoo, but uh, you know, it was still an obstacle. And with Win7, there's no obstacles to entry. Those clients already have everything they need to know to be able to get those preferences when people configure them, which I, you're totally right. No yeah. excuse. No excuse. <laughs> but 
what about any other prerequisites like Active Directory? Do you need to have special schema extensions? Do you uh, need to be running Windows Server 2008 Active Directory or what, what no, do you need? No, no, you don't. Um, the only bits that you need to update your schema are if other settings require that. So for example, BitLocker is a classic example for that. But for the preferences work, you don't need to update Active Directory at all. And um, you need a server in the sense that you need to have Active Directory because group policy is based off of Active Directory. But in order to manage this, you don't need a server, right? You just need um, RSAT, like I mentioned earlier, with yep. the GPMC bits. Uh, so you can, you can already start looking at it before you even start implementing it. And then putting into your environment, you know, it's, it's so simple to do something even really harmless, like just creating a shortcut and experimenting to see what that would look like. That's right. The other good thing that's interesting about preferences is that because it's not uh, true policy, it writes to the user hive of the registry, you can push something out and have it be like a real true preference and using you know, the command apply and do not reapply. So you can push yes. out a, a, a shortcut just, just as, a, as an option that says, you know, I think that if you ever have any questions about group policy, you should go to the group policy blog, like blogs.technet.com slash group policy and have that little shortcut. But you know, if that was pushed out to your machine, you'd think, no, mm -hmm. I'd rather have that. a shortcut to my blog. Yeah, I already yeah. have a feed into that blog. Um, you know, and, and your blog is also really excellent and goes very in-depth and some really awesome preferences work. So for those of you watching, if you're not able to see either my presentation or Alan's really, really in-depth presentation on preferences, go check out his blog. Check out the Group Policy blog. There's a bunch of preferences stuff out there that you can already start working with. Another one of the great things about preferences that makes it so easy to work with is that it's XML. So it's really lightweight and easy to pass around. So you can, you can get a cool preference that somebody has already written into their environment, something maybe that you've posted on your blog that says, this That's is right. a great example of, of configuring a power scheme. And then copy that XML, save it into a file, and then you have it. And you can immediately have everything that you need with it. So basically, there's no excuse. That's right. <laughs> and I think, that, I think that when you start working with preferences, you'll see that. What we see, overwhelmed with, with energy about how great preferences can be in your environment. Okay, excellent. So you mentioned the blog. What's the, the URL for the Group Policy Team's blog? Oh, uh, blogs.technet.com slash group policy. All one yep. big blurb. And if you say group policy blog in your search provider of choice, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers to say I think it's the top link on there. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. And uh, I've, like Lily said, I've got a blog as well. Uh, I've got a short URL for that. So just go to bit.ly slash abs. KBase, AB's KBase, or Knowledge Base. Go there and you'll find lots of articles about group policy there. Yeah, and especially about preferences. Look for the word preferences and you will not be disappointed. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alan. That's all right. <laughs> look at the shows on today. and We've got a few sessions coming up about group policy, so if you can make it, it'd be great. Otherwise, check it out on TechEd Online. Thank you.